and welcome to this episode of the Photo Posting Podcast with me, Josie Purcell. It's really good to have you here. This time, I speak with award-winning photographer, filmmaker, producer and mentor, Zoran Dragan. Based in Vancouver, we had a fabulous chat about the word flaneur and how it applies to his work, how he used to bury a 100-foot film in the ground to see the effects of nature on it, his new documentary with a self-taught artist from Costa Rica, an upcoming collaboration with a fellow Vancouver-based artist, but most of all, how nature impacts and informs his work and personal perspective. We'd also like to acknowledge that Zoran lives and works on unceded, traditional and ancestral Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh lands in Western Canada. It was a truly fascinating chat and Zoran's a truly fascinating character, so please enjoy. Quick apologies everyone, there was a little bit of an echo when I was recording. I hoped it hadn't picked it up, but it does a little bit when I'm talking, so I really do hope it doesn't ruin your listening experience. Just wanted to let you know. Soz. Well, hello, Saran. I'm really pleased that you've been able to join me this evening and you're chatting to me all the way from Vancouver. So it's really lovely to have you here. Welcome to the Photo Posting Podcast. Thank you, Josie. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I did sort of mention to you earlier that my husband visited Vancouver many years ago and fell in love with it. And one day I will hopefully come and visit. So um, I look forward to that. But one of the things that I did actually quite like about um, how you've described yourself, and I think it might be on one of your social media channels, is you actually used one of my favourite words. Um, I quite like the sounds of words. Um, And one of them is the word flaneur. Flaneur, Flaneur, yes. Yeah. And I think, think um, so do you, obviously, with your love of Vancouver and it being home for you, is that somewhere that you are a flaneur in? Yes. It's interesting that uh, you mentioned flaneuring because that's what I was trying to, with, with a colleague, figure out what would be the verb in English. Because in French, there is obviously, being a French word, there is... Uh, uh, a, a verb, uh, uh, and uh, yes, I do. I, I I try to explore. Being in Vancouver for thirty three years, there's always something new to, to discover, um, and and explore. Um, uh, that reflects, uh, like you mentioned, my social media. Uh, I post uh, daily on uh, on Instagram, um, a unique, quirky um, uh, pieces uh either about the architecture about the arts about uh, mm-hmm. the, the so- social things in in any form and um and that's also when i go traveling uh, that's the that's the other thing i try to always stay off the beaten path mm-hmm. um and i like mm-hmm. to see um you know i like to see other stuff um you know that that in, in, intrigues me inspires me and 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 really feeds my curiosity Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and actually, actually as, you, as you your Instagram account, I, I have had a, a, a look at sort of the images on there. And you do, like you say, you sort of intrigued by um, a variety of different um, things that are obviously uh, grabbing your attention in that moment for, for whatever reasons. Um, but I, I'm rather sort of drawn to uh, sort of your recent ones where you're looking up at these really large sort of skyscraper type buildings, I think. Um, so is that, and you'll have to excuse my ignorance here, is that therefore in, in Vancouver? Is that where you were when you were taking those then? Most about 80% is in Vancouver. Okay. Uh, okay. Vancouver is known as city of steel and glass. Um, ah, it, it that makes sense. Going... That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was coined by um, a, a local artist and, and a fellow alumni, uh, Douglas Copeland. It, it, it doesn't. It has that kind of unique appeal. I mean, it's not something that you, you really like. Uh, I personally, mm. I'm not a big fan of that kind of a form. But the form 
um, the result is, uh, is is a great reflection. Like even yesterday, I, I, I saw this new building being built and, and it's all in, in glass and the steel frames and it reflects everything surrounding it. Yeah. So there was something in artistic in that frame, in that glass, reflecting other things that were there for last like 40, 50 years. Vancouver <laughs> is relatively a new new city, mm -hmm. a world city, uh, being only uh, a few years ago, it celebrated 125 years. Okay. And um, and it's the, it's the city that uh, it doesn't have too many stone buildings per se, like you will find elsewhere in Canada on the mm -hmm. East Coast, mm -hmm. in the places like Montreal and Toronto, or New York, Boston, or Chicago. But it, it's, it, it, it excels in, in steel and glass architecture. So there is something uniqueness uh, uh, that, that really feeds my curiosity mm. and, and explore on a daily explorations. Well, I, I, I have to say, looking at the sort of the images that you've shared via Instagram, it really is giving me an insight into into the city, but, but not... Um, not the not like the the tourist viewpoint, shall we say? That you know, it's it's um really sort of telling a story. I think, and is that something from whatever environment you find yourself in that you're trying to do with with your work or with your photographs or with moving images? Is that something that you're always sort of hopeful of of sort of trying to build a story or tell a story with one image? Is that something that you feel is important in your work? Yes, I do. Um, yes, I do. Um, and um, it's, um, I always try to, to show the panoramic view mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. of, of a contemporary uh, world. And I'm, and I always apply uh, some, some unique way about it, either, when I was filming, when I was using film, uh, exposing film, the way I would film the film uh, with different exposures and then different process, processing that film mm -hmm. and then putting it all together. And now everything is digital. Everything is democratized. So, uh, you know, it's like if I'm running any filters yeah. with uh, with a pro uh, video image uh just just recently um flowing flow is the my short film that's um uh playing in um uh, uh, it's playing at few a uh, few festivals at the moment and um with that i was trying to um i was trying to uh show a natural flow of of a local um uh creek in, mm -hmm. in, in up in the hills and just juxtapose it with other images and um and uh, and and the filters but maintain the sounds of the of the river of the water flowing of the cold water coming down the, the mountain mm -hmm. so it's it's always a process it's always a different process that that intrigues me and and then i can i can see something that really reflects the the theme of the of the project or just the subject matter itself yeah yeah and you you just said that that obviously you've um, originally a little bit like me started off in film and then obviously uh, digital arrived and using digital. Um, I mean, when you're creating your work, uh, do you still mix? Do you mix both? Do you have a preference for either or, um, or do you find that the medium you use to to try and visualize what you want depends on the subject matter? How do you decide what you what you what you do what you use to to create your work? That is a fantastic question, and thank you. Um, yes, um, it, it it I go to a few different processes at the moment just to see and feel what will be the best way to to present. So um, I love film. Film is I would say my first love. <laughs> uh, both. The, the, just just feeling the celluloid un, under the fingers is just amazing uh, feeling. Um, if it's just a still photography or motion picture photography, the, the process, it's amazing. It cannot be replicated by any other form. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I would um, I would always think about it. 
what's the best way. Sometimes I go, uh, I, I go after f capturing the best possible and um, the best possible image, and then take it into the second level and then reprocess that image and then take it again and reprocess. And okay. if, I'm doing, if I'm doing photography, I will print and step print and, 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 and try to, if I need to dye the, 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 the film mm -hmm. or if I need to dye the paper and, and then see how everything uh, uh, turn out. If I'm doing the motion picture, I've done. Uh, I, I, I'm a great admirer of of Stan Brakhage, and and Stan's work really influenced me. And I was fortunate to get to know Stan through my uh, professor at Emily Carr and mentor David Rimmer. And, okay. Um, and uh, uh, David played just in the first few months of of me entering uh, Emily Carr. Uh, at the time, it was Art Institute. Now it's University, and. Mm -hmm. um, and he played the moth light and that just like uh did not short circuit all my receptors but it just like opened eyes wide yeah. to what's yeah. possible and um and then i tried to um and and just having that uh man to man or artist to artist discussion and talks with david really really um uh, guided me in a, in in a right direction to mm -hmm. and 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 his encouragement was great because he encouraged me to to explore and so I would go and film um, hundred foot rolls of film and then wow. I will wow. I will process them myself <laughs> then I will bury them uh, and then and just over the winter time so that film would freeze and thaw and and then oh, wow. freeze and thaw again and then I will come after a few months dig it up and just to see what has caused it to emotion emo emotion mm. being so sensitive I'll just not just to light but to to crackling and everything and then the effects were just sim simply amazing something that you cannot really replicate any yeah. other way yeah. um and so, so that that was um, that was the, the the inspiration and the and the guidance and and then also allowing me to do that in in, in david uh, Rimmer's class and and he's 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 a great um, a great friend and um, and so that was that was that was a catalyst for for my exploration just to seeing what's possible mm -hmm. and and just just to feel it uh, the other thing is a, a, a good uh, classmate of mine was filming his film and he wanted to do something different so what we did we we filmed the 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 positive film and that's rep that used to be used by reporters because that mm -hmm. film doesn't have a negative. So we will film the positive film and process it as a negative. And so what happens okay. is uh, there is no orange mask, so everything is green. And and that was like almost in a in in you know uh, in a way psychedelic in a way. And he made his uh, dialogue driven mainstream short grad short like that, and that was a fantastic. <laughs> Just to to have a, a positive, what I call a positive input uh, on on my colleague and uh, classmate to do that 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 was fantastic and and um, he really enjoyed it. He really enjoyed it. And people ask him like, "Why did you do that?" And he's like, "Why not?" And yeah, that was the, yeah. <laughs> that was the whole thing that really worked well at the end. And so, working with others is that something that's important to you? Sort of collaborating with others um, is is that something you do quite a lot of? Yes, yes, I do. Um, co I collaborate. Um, I also um, it, it, it's it's the teamwork. The film is. I mean, uh, yes, I I, I do an experimental and, and artistic artsy films, and 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 it can be a one man show. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's good when when there are a few. Uh, if if I'm tackling something that I cannot uh, do it myself, it's always great to have colleagues and and and, and yeah. likewise if my colleagues are doing something and I need a suggestion and input I'm there for them um and it's uh, it, it's great to be in in the midst of other uh like minds and then uh, just to see I mean it's also good to monitor and see the results mm. and uh and I also mentor that's another thing is uh I've been um involved with um few institutions in in Vancouver that uh, that uh, teach film 
and and television production and and um, I I was teaching for a while at the Canadian Film and Television Institute. I was teaching film theory and directing, and that was really inspiring. Wo- mm. Working with younger students, uh, just who are coming into the, the the film realm and just them trying to figure out what they want to do. Do they want to go the com- commercial route, mm. which I've been and gone through? And, or they want to go independent route and and see how that works and what's in there for them, mm. and um, and um, like I've done in my I feel I feel proud. Uh, I'm not bragging, but I feel proud that I've done over the the span of my career everything from comedy to drama and documentary. Yeah. I'm just finishing my documentary about uh, Beto, uh, an artist from Costa Rica. Uh, who is amazing okay, okay. Uh, person? Uh, th- this was idea that was prior to COVID. I, I got it got pitched to me, or um, somebody suggested to me like, "Oh, you gotta come and meet Beto." And I was like, "Who the hell is Beto?" And they said, "Beto is this self-taught, um, a self-taught uh, uh, artist in um, in Costa Rica who taught himself <laughs> how to paint, draw, and sculpt." And he built his own home. He raised he, he all his family, three generations live under uh, one big roof, three floor, three levels. He lives on the top. Um, he has an open sky roof. Oh, where he amazing! Sits. Amazing! I simply mm-hmm. amazing. I was like, I, I was sold. And uh, and I, I found that was Thursday evening, uh, Saturday morning. Uh, I, I was on a plane from mm-hmm. Vancouver mm-hmm. to to Costa Rica to meet and and greet. Beto and I was I, I booked about two weeks. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go see this Beto guy, see how it goes, and then I'm gonna go and visit with few of my colleagues who are in Costa Rica. I have a friend who who runs the surfing school, and I have a, a an old uh, professor also from Emily Carr who has moved <laughs> there and and has organic farm, and I'm gonna go visit with her and 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 some and just relax a bit. Yeah, I yeah. I spent all two weeks, twelve days with Beto Mm -hmm. and exploring, going through jungle. Um, It's just watching him, how he dredges the silt from the riverbed in the jungle. And then he dries it and he shows me how he forms the clay figurines Mm -hmm. that are inspiration for his next statue. He taught himself how to carve. So he was carving um, uh, wooden horses for the carousels. So if you are by any chance in in latin america or south mm-hmm. america on a carousel there's a chance possibility that you may be uh, riding one of the betos horse carousels <laughs> and uh yeah it was it, it was just eye-opening and then just listening i do not speak a word spanish before besides uh, one beer please <laughs> Una cerveza, per favor. <laughs> and, and thank you and, and um but and and he was constantly sharing not talking he was just sharing the wisdom that Mm -hmm. i discovered that in the post-production stage when i got my colleague diego uh uh, amazing uh uh, mexican uh filmmaker from guadalajara uh who who came and assisted me and then i i brought him on board as my assistant director and, and and a partner in this project and he says, These are, this is fantastic because I asked Beto, uh, I, um, Beto just to talk to me and tell me what he wants to share. And he had a lot to share and just seeing him. And then he got uh, commissions from the uh, in the 70s from the church to build these uh, huge statues of Virgin Mary and, and Jesus the Redeemer. And then how he used sometimes at times his body to 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 feel and see and there's a lot of little, little things that will be revealed in the documentary once it's done hopefully by the end of this month and um it's just fantastic and then yeah, I, I was yeah. like reliving all of this experience again in in a post-production stage just listening to him and and he had a lot to share for someone who is self-taught it's just like mm. um, yeah and I think, I think with, with Costa Rica, um, although I haven't had the, the, the privilege of visiting yet, hopefully one day, um, but it is, I guess, one of the countries in the world that is, is probably more well known for its environmental um, positive way of doing things, you know, that, that yes. so many people there are, are um, 
making sure that the way they live and the way things are done are done with an environmental outlook i or and sustain you know sustainability and caring for for where they where they are so hearing about you know working with someone who is going out into the jungle and sort of getting their hands sort of uh, in 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 the silt and, and a bit like yourself when you spoke about your one of your earlier pieces of work where you were burying it in the earth and sort of seeing what you could create from from the earth itself almost yes yes indeed i i like actually the direction we're going with this uh conversation because we, we we're kind of going in different directions but they're all going to be tying up nicely in, 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 at the end um, with Beto is and, and Costa Rica is it's fantastic because yes Costa Rica is one of the few countries in the world that after uh, the World War II they they um, disbanded their army in around I believe yeah. 1946 so all the, the money in Costa Rica that will go for armaments and and the army and and protection goes towards environmental stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the few countries that, that has about 6% of ecosystem. So mm. six, the, the, uh, Costa Rica is not a large country. It's a tiny country and has a 6% of ecosystem and, and also uh, biodiversity. And, and, and it, it, it is uh, uh, the, the only issue there is a plastic like everywhere yeah. else. That's yeah. the thing that we cannot really take the grip on it's the plastic it's everywhere even when i go on my my hikes i yeah. do come back at least with the and i carry a little plastic bag just to collect other plastics yeah. along the way yeah. and that's the, that seems to be a problem because people seem neglect and 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 and, and leave behind the plastic mm. uh, materials in in the nature and that doesn't uh compose or yeah. break down yeah. as quickly so that seems to be yes and then goes down to the uh, mother earth and uh, the the connection with with art and uh, inspiration and and just like just going for walks because i'm now yeah. it, what's easy it's I, I have my cell phone and if i need to take a picture i'm there if i need to take a little quick video clips i have yeah. it yeah. At, at, uh, at disposal and i can do that and I can bring it back, and then just ideas and and and, and juices starts to flow, and then some some new concepts. And, yeah. And then, yeah. then I can think of a next my next new piece, and uh, and just start working around. So, so for you, would you say that the most of your inspiration then for your for the work that you produce is predominantly from um, the natural world, or is it a mixture of the natural world, but also the people you meet, um, and obviously with your Instagram, the the slightly more urban elements. I mean, is there something that you say fuel would be fueling the main driver behind your work? Both, both, both. Uh, but inspiration, basically the catalyst. And the primer to that would be the natural world. Mm. Natural world is the place I go to retreat, yeah. reflect, regroup, uh, and then come back uh, and refresh. And that's that's the thing. And I try to do that uh, on a weekly basis. I have a mm. good colleague of mine. Um, uh, he's he's a, a, a longtime friend and a photographer. And um, either I initiate to go for a hike or he does i i believe he's right now hiking someplace on the lower mainland this is the area that uh, encompasses vancouver and all the surrounding okay uh towns or boroughs and um um and then uh, and then just like ideas just not not just ideas it's just like in general things like uh direction where and what i'm going to do with my life now things are a little bit on a hold because of the covid yeah and, and yeah. pandemic but uh, hopefully things uh, will uh, open up. I just heard that uh, yesterday that the border, uh, a border with the United mm -hmm. States and Canada has opened to, okay. to some limited travel. So it's it, it's all going to the posi positive direction. So we'll see what um, 
what the future will bring but for now it's 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 and it, it, that's what we are blessed here in, mm. in in Vancouver in the area is that it, it's only like a 20 minutes away to be up in the hills and and and, and mountains mm. uh, and then just like uh, and then you know if you know if you know your way around hiking and follow the guidelines and follow the paths and and have proper foot gear and and clothing you, you can enjoy it all year round so it's not just like in in the, in the spring and summer it's all year long yeah. and yeah. snowshoeing my friends love going <laughs> snowshoeing i'm yet to get crazy about it um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see hopefully <laughs> did you did you find then because because obviously with last year and, and the covid situation i mean you know so many people i speak to have said that um if you take out the hideousness of the situation and sort of just apply it to their everyday lives they actually found it was almost like they had a an opportunity to take time out of, of what is essentially for most people a busy fast-paced way of living and so many people found um, their local neighborhoods um, and the sort of beauty in in where they lived and the you know I, I've actually lived in the village where I live for almost 20 years and I actually discovered a footpath down to the beach that I didn't even know existed so oh you know, do, you, do you think that that did that give you a time to, to sort of reflect not only on your own sort of circumstances but on like you say what might come next for your work and how you might work yes yes it it, it has um, a lot of um, uh, a lot of travel was uh, local travel only. At one point, a few months ago, when uh, we were experiencing the third wave of COVID, uh, we were not e we were suggested not to travel to surrounding cities or towns. Mm. Uh, instead of just to stay in, in our own and and just keep a low profile of of some sort, um, and that um, that really. Um, gave me an opportunity to explore inward and locally and 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 do a lot of uh traveling on foot and uh which was really great because um i did um come across a few things similar to what you just mentioned like just finding that pathway to the beach <laughs> that you were not aware of um i found uh, several uh trails that uh were really fantastic and um panoramic and and then um, and then just like a, it's like a little kind of life hacks, you know. You you learn um, you learn and you figure out things, and um, and then just um, yeah. And then it, it, it's always it, I mean it's it, life is a, a, a ongoing learning experience, and and this um, you, this was like a blessing in disguise that with mm. all these things going on you're able to learn something new and apply and it works so so it's like perfect you know like I'm, mm. I'm happy about it with with that sort of time um to be able to sort of go out on foot um or even previously when you were you know when you, we could travel more freely um i was quite interested in the element of your work where i think you consider physical motion and and movement mm -hmm. and how you address that in still images as well as moving images that is a really good question uh, and i'm just i'm just starting to think about um about my current pro uh, collaboration project that i'm i'm working with uh, a local vancouver artist uh kristen mann and uh her and i uh, are just uh, uh in the process of developing this collaboration mm -hmm. uh, uh that's part in the city and part in the nature and uh we we talk about uh kristen's work is really about the water and amare and and uh, talks about the the sea and, and the water and then and i'm doing uh, I'm, I'm trying to explore the construct like what we just earlier talked about the the, the, the those interesting intriguing uh, architectural yes, places yes. in in the city, and 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 the one place that we we really 
came across and we want to use it's this uh, local parkade. And the park, it has a spiral in case it, it spirals and it, it is so intriguing. It, it looks like uh, a, a rib cage in, in, of some uh, of some sort. And then um, and then um, uh, uh, what we want to do is juxtapose the image of that. And that location itself, it's it was the original shoreline of Vancouver and Vancouver also had a lot of rivers that were over the times over the last 125 years ever since the city was established were cemented covered oh. up. <laughs> and um it, they were like about seven really good streams uh, yeah. uh i mean not just to produce fresh groundwater but also yeah. to um also for the for the fish but they were just covered up over over and so at the place of one of the streams and the shoreline um a little delta there was this this garage was built this concrete parkade and so we are exploring this for the our new uh piece and um it's going to be a single channel video um uh, and and then just like just opposing the 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 waterfalls uh mm -hmm. we found these amazing waterfalls and images that are going to be superimposed over the this skeletal like concrete feature of the of the um, of the parkade mm. and uh, and then um it, it's going to be called fall and rise and um and um and then i will keep you posted more on 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 our developments and, yeah. and how yeah. it goes we're just in, a, in in initial step and um and we'll see we we're hoping to um do it in in conjunction with the city of vancouver um because um it would be nice to have their support. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I love that. I have to say in, in, in sort of um, what I call my, my day job, um, I actually work for a, a charity that um, restores and protects and looks after rivers in the, in the West Country, in the Southwest of England. So, um, yes, sort of hearing about rivers being concreted over or... Of, of finding their ways back to life. Um, so I'd be really interested to to sort of see that and find out more about it. So definitely do do keep me posted on that one. Um, now, you did say earlier, you said um, not, not to boast, I think, or, or I think that's the word you might have, something along those lines, but you're actually, you're actually a, an award-winning producer director. So what sort of... Um, what would you say? And obviously, you talked about being a mentor as well. What advice could you perhaps give to someone who was listening in and is interested in how to maybe use photography or film um, in a way that might help or support um, environmental thinking or, or for, you know, to encourage action for environmental issues, that sort of thing? The advice I would give what's really great i would say right now is that we as much as the film celluloid is great it's also really a pollutant mm -hmm. um, like the chemicals the fixers they they are not great for environment uh yes they have made some strides and improvements over the decades and and they're less toxic less pollutants but they're still heavy metals in, mm -hmm. in some and silvers and and so what? So um, I would say that um, my approach will be um, just be respectful, respectful and generous when going into the nature. Um, don't disturb the nature. Try to leave it as as the way you found it. Uh, but do do feel do feel free to 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 capture it, share it, ex explore it, and be careful because I've I've seen like some creatives they go to the nature and they they try to get the best picture or the best shot or best video clip and they hurt themselves so um it's just like it sometimes it's it's not worth it and then see if there is something like that's not not good uh, like if there's pollution something like that try to capture it and, and use that to bring it to others others attention i mean i i, I normally ask everyone on, on the sort of photo posting podcast 
if if and and how they think um photographic mediums can influence the wider world around um environmental matters simply because like nowadays photography film it, it's it's with us it's all around us it, even if we don't realize it we're influenced by it so you know how can how could you sort of try and make your work stand out in in the the noise of it all i guess <laughs> i don't see this as a competition like um in in a way but i see it as you know if if it's if it's something that's really poignant mm. if it's something that's really important to share I think that's where the the the, the where that uh, for me that where where the the reward lies. Uh, I, I'm if if I can bring something to someone's attention and then they it can it can start off a dialogue. Yeah. Uh, we I have colleagues right now in on Vancouver Island. Um, there's logging. There's a, a great destruction happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, the Ferry Creek. Um, that's where the uh, the the rain the the oldest rainforest in the world is being cut by the okay. loggers, and so I have friends, colleagues, who have gone there uh, to mm -hmm. protest, who have gone there to capture um, this injustice and bring it and share it with the world, mm -hmm. um, because they they thought. By 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 day, I mean the the big business, the logging business, the government. They because it's the COVID, people will not travel, people will yes. not be yeah. to go and and follow, and and they uh, proved us all wrong. Uh, because when it comes to nature, we care. Yeah, and and that's why they are. They being uh, some of the colleagues are being arrested and harassed by mm -hmm. the authorities uh, just for the for for being and standing up with mm -hmm. the nature and for their and for all of our benefits which is just uh, and then that's the same thing on the other part of the uh, our province here british columbia is um, it's the pipeline uh, that uh, they want to run through the uh, ma major headwaters, and these are the yeah. the, the sources yeah. of rivers. So uh, they said, like the you know, you just need like a uh, one droplet of of oil will pollute mm. so many liters, and and you can't really get out of the water system. And can you imagine if the oil tankers and the ruptured pipelines, yeah. and also in the, what they're doing just to drag this? How much? How uh, because they have to they have to cut down the forest they have to yeah yeah uh dig up for, for the pipes some of the pipes are underground some of the pipes are overground or above the ground so that that is like a we here we are sandwiched by the two injustices that are happening in yeah. our uh, in our backyard and 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 we have to um um and i will be blunt we have to fight for yeah. our rights and and our um and justice that uh, this this doesn't go through or got, doesn't go forward because uh, it, it's not going to be well for none of us, not just for yeah. the locals yeah. here, but for the rest of the world. Because if we are losing on one side, the old precious rainforest that's filtering that, that that's that's the lungs uh, to our mm -hmm. world, and then we also losing the the water. The, Which I always the, say the, the veins of the world. So, the veins, so, yeah. the, exactly <laughs> the the veins of the world, and yeah. And it's, yeah. It's so yeah, so we have to like that's that's the case. That's the more extreme case where um, where it's good to be on the front lines and capturing mm. this yes. and 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 finding the uh, the the artistic uh, uh, viewpoint and then using that and sharing it with the world. Now you you actually just mentioned your. Um, new collaboration, collaboration then with um, Kristen, um, yes. that you can you can hopefully keep us all updated on. Um, have you had any other shows or or exhibitions or any um, other films um, in twenty twenty, or that you're you've got um, planned for the future? Yes, I, 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 even though we had a, a pandemic. Um, and and things were not uh, we can say busy. 
um, but I had um, I, I had a really good uh, a really good steady uh, exhibition uh, just like um, in the last uh, week week I just got news from um, I got a news from actually from London mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Moxim Collective is screening um, it, it, it was screening my um, actually from the for the month of May and June they're screening uh, my short flowing flow Sussex okay. Festival of okay. I, Sussex Festival of Ideas which is starting as we speak is also going to screen it and I was selected one of the 15 or 16 artists oh fantastic um, to present so that that's uh, so and 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 this interview with you, you Josie is ties it up again so nicely and um, and then my friend uh, informed me that um, also over the weekend, uh, the London Gallery weekend, the reopening of London Gallery is also um, um, I passed the flowing flow, which was screened there as well. So that um, uh, that just for the flowing flow. And, and then my other film, uh, Blue Balloon, is uh, playing in States. Okay, um, okay. At the short festival, and um, and then I always have a little odd screening here and there, mm. and um, uh, because I also have stuff uh, with my distribution um, in 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 Belgium, and uh, and then in, it's in in a few archives in Europe, and uh, so I get an odd email from time to time and saying it's playing here, it's playing there, and then I just like try to connect with artists yeah, and, yeah. and and programmers and just in case I need to be there for Q&A or something like that and and there's been a lot of zooms uh, I can tell you about <laughs> a lot of zooms and that's uh, that's been that's been fun I know some people know might some be a little bit of, 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 of online, online meetings but I've actually behind. found it to be one of the positives and even this recording with you now sort of you know just people are just more comfortable with it I think hopefully <laughs> how have you found it then with Zoom? I, f I found it uh, for for the places where I'm not able to travel it's great because I can mm. see and and I can talk to people um, but uh, somehow I cannot process for the local, for the people till about, let's say, last March, I was able to see in person. And yeah. really, yeah. Um, what people note and know about me in Vancouver, when I'm in Vancouver or elsewhere, I'm really active with with, with the arts, artistic scene. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was so happy, so proud last Friday to attend one of the first openings in person. We had like 20 people at the gallery excellent and to see this artwork live mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. artists present with colleagues of mine that i've seen on the same circuit for over the years i can't wait for other things to open up there's a one coming up this weekend and uh it's worked by two of my colleague artists and i can't <laughs> wait to see their work in live in person and and, and to see them again and greet them yes um and um and of course, all under protocol of COVID wearing yes, masks, yeah. but still it, it's, it's a one step, one step that really fulfills that, that need and that, uh, that, uh, in, in yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> happiness that, you know, like warmth that we, we, you are there with your peers, your colleagues and, um, and there you to enjoy and they, they're there to share their artwork and you're there to enjoy and, and, and savor and, and absorb and then and it's just like it's amazing feeling. So I'm mixed for those that are local. I, I, I just have a I have a really mixed feeling. I can't process that because I'm just like, oh, my God, when I'm going to see it. And, <laughs> but for the ones that are elsewhere around the world, that that's been great because then you can see them and, and, and chat with them and then. It's 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 a different. So it's like yeah, uh, yeah, one thing yeah. at a time. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and I think, and I think one, of one of the things I would say from opening, opening art up to art people who might not necessarily might be able to engage in it, engage in, it um, in, in person, person, I suppose that is that one of the plus sides, plus sides because a number of, a number of uh, exhibitions, exhibitions have have taken you know had to take sort of an online an virtual. Um. Uh, choice, choice in the last mm -hmm. year so it'd be nice to almost potentially sort of 
when we can have the in-person meetings because they give you something completely different to an online meeting but also perhaps have elements of those um you know the accessibility to to shows because if we can open up and share you know from my point of view sharing stories about environmental matters through photography and if you can actually get that to even wider audiences then you've got the best of both worlds i guess yes exactly you're just reaching not just to our community you're reaching out to others mm -hmm. and, and 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 just yeah that's that's that then then it's it's well the job well done now if people listening into to the podcast actually wanted to find out um more about work you've already um shared or the upcoming work where would be the best place for people to find out about um what you're doing I would um, I would direct them to either my Instagram, uh, the handle attention van a t t e n t i o n v a n attention van, or to my YouTube channel. It will be Zogs. Okay. Z. Okay. I don't know. Uh, do you say Z or Z in in UK? Uh, we said we say Z. <laughs> Z. Good. <laughs> Uh, because somehow we here we here in Canada we say Z. Uh, sorry, we had C, we sorry we say Z or in states they say Z. Um, <laughs> so it will be uh, Z O R uh, Z O X X Zox on okay. YouTube okay. on YouTube channel. Well, I shall make sure that I put put those into the um, information on the podcast, so anyone listening in is is able to go out, go and find out um, more about what you're up to. Um, but I'm I've been really fascinated um, by how you use film, uh, moving image, and still images, and how um, I think we've touched on how movement. Um, really sort of runs through it whether it's you physically moving and, and in your uh, flaneurial <laughs> I don't know what the right way to say that um, but yes yeah, so in that aspect or whether it is sort of the moving image and the, like the flowing of the water all of those things um, but also how it's very much your environment and where you are is, is really part of, of what you're doing as well yeah. So, yeah, I'm really glad that you were able to, to join me. I said, I'm so glad that we had this opportunity to talk. Um, uh, virtually great meeting you. Hopefully uh, there will be opportunity to meet you in person and, and, and see your wor work and also uh, see the work that you do with Rivers and, and the nonprofit and protection, because that's that's really an important job that you do as well. Oh, thank you. I shall I shall let you know more. Please do. Uh, thank you, Saran. Thank you so much for taking part. And um, we'll hopefully one day catch up in Vancouver. You never know. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saran. All the best. Cheers. Bye-bye. 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 It's always fabulous to chat with photographers from around the globe and hear what inspires them and motivates them to make work or to look after their environments locally or further afield. And really good news, since I've spoken to Saran, he let me know that the logging has ceased in the rainforest on Vancouver Island and the Keystone pipeline was scrapped completely. So that's excellent news for the environmental movement in British Columbia. If you want to check out Saran's work, don't forget you can see him on Instagram at attentionfan and on YouTube under the name Zox, Z-O-X-X. But as usual, I'll make sure all the links to his social media and where he's showing his work are in the podcast text. I hope to see you next time, or I hope you'll hear me next time. Bye for now.